Hi, good afternoon everybody and then yeah, uh, this is Levinson Foundation International. We have just started this program which is a conference for the state level across Nagaland and we are privileged actually to have this hosted. Uh, in the notice they have selected about seven states. Uh, unfortunately as I have mentioned in the morning that we could not uh, take into Manipur because there have been some crises over there for which we are very saddened and I hope that peace is restored at the earliest. And then right now we are having this program especially in context to the FLN and the NEP and the G20. So we have eminent speakers, we also have the Vice Chancellor from ICFI, who was a former, also the professor in the IIT, which ranks seventh in all over India in Assam. And then we are having this program so that we understand the new policies that have been created by the Government of India, which is immensely good for the young children who will be coming up and we know that the old system of education, which has been redundant, I would say that there is a change. So I hope that uh, the education system across India does not follow the old traditional system where only marks and grade was given the privilege or given the attention. And in fact, the merit list also is no more there in the CBSC now. We do not give attention to the top 10 and top 20, but we give rather to all holistic approach. So I feel that uh, where the NEP is concerned, I guess now only 40% of the marking will be considered and the rest 60% will be looking at the different aspect where co-curriculum and other activities also will be taken into much importance. And especially when we're talking about the skills, this is also very important because all cannot make it as a uh, scholar because we have different skills and I know that every children are in their own perspective. They have a very fantastic role that they can play in whatever ways they can. It's not that only the bookish knowledge brings you to become somebody great. I've seen across that bookish knowledge has now no more in the modern world. They are more interested and to see that when we look at the modern world, they are into looking at the conceptualization of understanding. Making the student think, I think that is more important rather than to make them think and to memorize. And I would also like to mention that especially the coaching, the coaching centers and the tuition has become a menace because it is only making them a robot, I would say that. And we, we understand that the old school of thoughts, the, especially the teachers, what they used to do is they give the notes or they give the maths kind of a, a formula or whatever the step that has been done. And if you do not uh, answer the exact word by word, we don't get marks. And also some of the um, maths steps which they have given us, provided us. If you do not perform that, they'll say, even if your marks are, even if your answer is right, but the step which I've shown you, it's wrong. So where did you get the steps? This, and they want that to happen like it's only their step that should be followed or the answers that should be followed. It is not that in this modern world. In this modern world is that what you understand, what is the concept, you can answer in whatever ways. So these are the formulas which I feel that the new education policy has taken up for the betterment. And I know that the children are fantastic, I would say that. We cannot undermine a backbencher just because he did not get a great A plus or 100 upon 100 doesn't mean a student is bad. A student, everybody I've seen in my own practical life, 90% of the students who are backbenchers have made it much more better in life than those who have even got the toppers. Not demeaning them, not undermining them, but we need to adapt and adopt the good situation that the NEP has come in and I'm very thankful to the government of India and especially all the state also to be implementing the new NEP and also the G20 and not forgetting the FLN also. Uh, today's participation we have more than 20 schools because we could not call upon everybody from across because of the uh, time factor was number one and also we could not accommodate over here so we could accommodate what we could so about more than 120 uh, what you call uh, participants are here as of now and there will be also a painting competition which we could not do it on the spot because of the climate and also that but they have brought it and there will be uh, it's about the particular theme that we will be doing. He has uh, his awards and honors on the UGC Fellowship for PhD work in 1986, UGC Teacher Fellowship for three years in 1990, and has an outstanding paper award in finance at the Fourth International Borneo Business Conference 2010 for the paper Branch Level Efficiency of, of New Finance Institutions and its Determinants and Application of Data and Development Analysis in Assam, India. 
So you may kindly take the stage. I'm here to uh, listen to you instead of speaking a, a lot in front of you. Today's conference is on Foundation Literacy and Numeracy, NEP as well as Z20. Maybe in the next session I'll be speaking something as a layman on Z20 because I am not a student of politics as well as uh, not a student of education. I am a student in uh, economics. <coughs> but uh, as uh, Dr. Saima has pointed out, uh, the better side of the NEP, we are just discussing that uh, whenever we talk about education, uh, there are uh, ex expansive education, but uh, what is the quality of education? <coughs> Very recently, uh, Niti Ayuk has come up with the index of education in India amongst the larger states as well as among the smaller states. In the larger states, uh, Kerala becomes the one. And in the smaller states, uh, uh, Manipur is the one, the first. And Nagaland is in the fifth position with 48 point some percentage of marks. So you see that now why, why we are, as for example, as because I am now serving Nagaland. I have more interest in this state and its education from the school level to the university level. We need to bring about changes in the quality of education. And, uh, and there I think that uh, this topic is very important. Not only the NEP, the foundations of uh, literacy and numeracy. What is the literacy? As, as a layman, I understand that literacy ultimately helps us to communicate to read, to write, and to communicate. And which is always, it's a part of a human being. We always need to communicate. Uh, we always uh, need to communicate in the greater sense of the term. Whatever we understand, we need to communicate. So therefore, reading, writing, and uh, communicating is very important. In the same way, literacy, uh, numeracy, that is the numbers. Uh, the simple uh, uh, numbers are required in the the plus minus multiplications and divisions. And these two are always the way of life. Whenever we have to, these abilities always make us uh, to stand in the, uh, uh, in the day to day activities of our life. Whenever we go to purchase anything, you need, you need the numerology. A anybody. So, so therefore, you see that these two are very important and these are the foundations of uh, any kind of an education. I'm not talking about the language, the literature you may be, uh, now it is being told that uh, the modern language is the best language to start with. But nowadays we know that you, know, we, you are living in a modern age and you need uh, various kinds of languages also, not only on, on your mother language but other languages. The, the more language one can acquire, it is always an advantage, I believe. But I, I cannot speak much, I, I can speak only three languages. Uh, my mother tongue is Assamese, I am from Assam. Uh, I can speak a bit Hindi and uh, I can communicate in English. But the, the, the thing is the numerology, the same pattern is always very important. There are complex numerologies also. Whenever we are writing the research papers and all, uh, you need to have the com complex numerology. The data need to be analyzed and all. Uh, somebody was uh, talking about my paper, so data envelope analysis. So there are different maths and uh, uses are there. We use computers and softwares are there to run the show. So, so therefore these are, uh, one has to equate. But the thing is that, so that is why I, I feel that uh, these topics are very important, that numerology and, and we need to improve on the quality and that lies not only uh, the older stakeholders, because the teachers have a role to play. How to teach the numerology? Because I feel that you know, there is a phobia about maths. Especially we find that in the Northeast region. I'm not talking, I do not know much about Nagaland, but in many parts of the Northeast regions, we find that uh, uh, there are very less number of students who are going to the science streams. Why? Because of uh, the, the maths. Because that is the foundation, that foundation need to be strong. Always I believe that school education need to be stronger. So that if you have a very good foundation, so naturally top levels will be easier. So 
therefore that school education always we need to emphasize that we have to improve on the quality of school education and i think uh, as rightly pointed out by dr sema that uh, the new education policy may provide us an opportunity because there are a lot of uh, emphasis on holistic development because whenever we are uh, we are producing the human resources not only the education education is one part academic is a part but other facets of life are also very important because ultimately we have to fit in the society at large. We have to contribute positively to the society. I think from those angles, I think uh, that new education policy uh, will be very helpful. I, I, I do not know much about the policy as such, uh, especially uh, the focusing on school education. Uh, but, but I think that you know, there are a lot of changes and there are a lot of opportunities, there are a lot of challenges will be there. And I think slowly we'll be able to overcome this. As rightly pointed out, we're just sitting and discussing that no, uh, that uh, extracurricular, co-curricular activities. The, in the plains, you have the playing fields. You can you know, play. Now it is the fascination for cricket. No, like uh, all, all those things because these, these are demonstration effect. We have the TVs and mobiles and all. All these things are available. No, Messi and uh, no Ronaldo. Uh, in the same way that the cricket, uh, the big names are there. Very recently, the World Cup has completed. So I also enjoy it. But the thing is that, no, rightly point out that it may not be available everywhere, especially in the hilly, hilly terrain, but we can adapt to the situations. Like here of the hills, you can have a mountaineering, you can have a nature walk, you can have a bird watching. So nowadays, you will find that, no, these things are happening in uh, in, uh, in other institutions also, uh, uh, I, I was a uh, uh, faculty in uh, IIT Guwahati for around 25 years. So we have the bird watching club uh, because it's a huge campus uh, around 750 hectares of land with the hills and ponds and all. But the thing is that no, so in that, in the midst of uh, the urban area, you see that now we have a bird watching club. We have an astronomic club. So it is, you now you see that you now a student can be involved in those ways also. The different small, small clubs, it's a debating club. Somebody is interested in literary uh, debating, extempore speech, something like the drama club. So you see that the involvement of the students, not necessarily we have to recently follow the NEP. NEP is saying that you should have a hobby club. The what kind of hobby? There can be lots of hobbies are there depending on the requirement you can have. And in all these, I always feel that, no, students need to participate uh, actively. Because whenever the active participation of students are there, I believe that no, that will bring in the team spirit and the teamwork, which is very important. Individually, we will grow and as well as we have to inculcate those kind of habits of team activities. Because nowadays, especially, uh, in various activities, we need to work in the team spirit. Because, as for example, in a school, the principal, the head, uh, headmaster or somebody cannot, but it is ultimately the, all the teachers along with the administration, you have to work together with the help of the students. So that, no, we can uh, make it a bigger, uh, better place too for everybody. So, so that we can contribute positively. So, so, so these are uh, quite important. I think that NEP will be providing uh, because uh, uh, the, the special people, I, I find that uh, there are five of my speakers from Nagaland University is coming. Uh, uh, so they will be speaking a lot uh, on, the, on these fronts. Secondly, G20, I will just uh, touch on these uh, aspects because I'll be speaking a bit uh, at a later period, whenever the sessions will be coming. So, G20 presidency has started for India uh, sometime in December. And G20 actually, uh, it has born because of the, the crisis. And specifically, whenever we call about, it is a financial crisis. Asian financial crisis, and after that, you will find that there is an international financial crisis. And actually, which has started in 2008 and the crisis has happened in 2009. So it was a, a crisis that started in uh, 2008 in the United States of America. 
Because now we are in a global village. Every country is interlinked with each other. If something happens somewhere, ultimately it has an impact on. Now we see that uh, Russia Ukraine Ukraine war is still happening I mean, so many months and years now. But it has an impact on uh, the various countries, although we are not directly involved in the war or we are far away from the war. But in, in certain ways we are also affected. You see that you now therefore there are a lot of inflationary pressures in the economies everywhere. The economies are not growing in a better way. Whether we talk about India, whether we talk about China, forget about other uh, developed countries. Because uh, most of the developed countries are uh, developing maybe at the rate of 2 to 3 percent. Although China and India is around 6, 7 percent. So, so, so you see that you know, G20 is a forum where there can be a togetherness so that you know, how we can develop. Uh, the society at large and the G20 encompasses a large number of uh, the countries and large number of people, especially the focusing on the developing uh, economies. And it is a kind of a rotating presidency. So now it is the Indians, India's turn after Indonesia. Uh, we'll be having it till uh, sometime in November. Then some other presidency will come and every country will have a focus areas and all. So we have started with G20 and the good thing here is happening that no G20 meeting there are numbers of uh, more than 200 meetings in the G G20s in different spheres and these are happening in different parts of the country. I think uh, the Kohima has also hosted a uh, conference on G20 related to certain specific areas. Uh, very recently uh, Srinagar, Jammu Kashmir, they have uh, conducted a G20 meeting on tourism. And you see that, that the kind of exposure, uh, the, the kind of uh, uh, the, the, the diversity we have, the kind of these feelings which the G20 delegates are getting from different parts of India and ultimately that will help in various ways of financing the different kinds of projects, maybe uh, enhancing the tourism and all. So, so you see that it is a kind of a, uh, this kind of a meetings and this kind of a uh, the knowledge ultimately may bring in some kind of positive Im impact uh, in, in the future and there will be a lot of commonality and there are a lot of common advancements are there because no, nowadays we are talking about the environment and I, I think environment uh, impacts everybody whether it's a developed or developing country. I was given the topic of G20 and uh, sitting there and listening to Professor Dr. S. Borbora I believe he has covered most of the aspect which I was also planning to speak on. So thank you, sir, for enlightening us. Uh, why this G20 was formed? And what is the relevance of us as students, as educators, as innovators? That is one point where I would like to delve on. Uh, the G20, as our professor has said, that it was formed as an international forum to tackle issues related to global economy, such as the international financial stability, uh, climate change mitigation, and sustainable development. So three, because of three major issues, the G20 was formed 23 years ago. Now, from my background, I question myself, okay, how can I contribute in this G20 uh, presidency that's happening in my country? So, of the three areas that why G20 was formed, I thought maybe in the climate change mitigation and sustainable development, these are two areas where I can also contribute in some way. And this was what I thought the students, like you, Students can also be part of in this G20 presidency when it's happening in our country. We still have five more months to go. It's going to end in November 30. Started last year in 1st December uh, during our statehood day in Kohima. So, talking about climate change mitigation. Have you noticed that in your houses, in your colonies, the wells have dried up? Well, in my house, I have two wells. 
they both the wells dried up. It, norm, it normally doesn't dry up. So I used to be very proud, you know, I used to brag about my two wells that give me clean water, it is oxide free. Then uh, suddenly this year it dried up. Why? And then have you noticed the erratic uh, supply of power in Dimapur? Forget about the rest of the state. Even the commercial hub, the so-called commercial hub of Nagaland, we're suffering from electricity erraticity. I don't know how to, how to tell you. And uh, of course the heat. Uh, I thank the school that we have these air conditioners running. That's why we're able to sit here like this. If you step outside, it's a different story altogether. Well, so coming into that, I think this is what G20 is all about. We have less water in our wells. We have less rainfall. We have uh, increased ambient temperature. This is all because of climate change. And this is, what, this is one reason why G20 was formed. And this is where all of us can also be a part of the G20 presidency. That's where I want to come in.